Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 17th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you follow it, then you probably can't avoid uh, the solar winds compromise, one of the critical indicators of compromise that often has been mentioned is DNS queries. One of the first thing the backdoor does when it's deployed is to reach out to a host within the avsvmcloud.com domain. So first thing to do for you as a defender and a threat hunter, of course, is to check your DNS logs for queries for this domain. Well, it turns out if your infrastructure is mostly cloud-based, this may be a difficult undertaking and in today's diaries, Daniel is going over some of the options that you have available here in Azure and in AWS. And well, some of these features actually have just recently become available. So unlikely that you will have DNS logs going back to March, which is what you really need in this particular case. And talking about solar winds and uh, this AVS vmcloud.com domain turns out that FireEye apparently has taken possession of this particular domain name. This should put an end to any additional spread of the malware because the first thing that the malware apparently does is download additional code from a host name within that domain. FireEye is pointing the host names now to addresses uh, within Microsoft's IP address space. GoDaddy is the registrar at this point. So if you do name resolutions of these host names uh, today, you will end up with Microsoft IP addresses. You should still look for DNS queries and outbound traffic uh, to, for uh, this particular domain name. So that's still a good indicator, but don't be surprised if the connection then points to a Microsoft IP address. And German Computer Magazine, Heise has an interesting article related to SolarWinds pointing to a now no longer public support document published by SolarWinds back in 2018, requesting that customers exempt any SolarWinds related directories from antivirus scans. This is very common and usually bad advice where a vendor feels that antivirus may impact performance of their product and requests that customers exempt their product from antivirus scans. First of all, uh, that's uh, hardly ever a big factor. And secondly, just like in this case, we now have antivirus signatures for these malicious uh, DLLs. Uh, for example, Microsoft's uh, own Defender product started to quarantine the affected uh, DLLs as of uh, this week. But if you in the past exempt uh, these directories from scanning, then of course these new signatures will do you no good. So double check uh, if maybe someone in your organization has followed that advice and exempt SolarWinds from antivirus scans and make sure you remove those exemptions. And HP Enterprise released a security bulletin warning of a vulnerability in the Systems Insight Manager or SIM. The vulnerability is a deserialization vulnerability that could lead to remote code execution and has been assigned a CVSS version 3 score of 9.8. While there is no patch available, HP did note a workaround essentially in order uh, to prevent exploitation of this vulnerability. First, you should uh, disable or remove the federated search and federated CMS configuration feature. And secondly, there is a specific war file that is listed in the advisory that you should just delete. This particular tool does listen on port 50,000. So a quick port scan for port 50,000 should identify potential vulnerable systems. 
And yesterday I mentioned a vulnerability in the Go XML parsing library that led to some issues with SAML. Well, uh, we have another a little bit similar vulnerability, this time in SAP's HANA product, which does use SAML assertions for authentication authorization. Now, a very similar issue in a sense, an actually an issue that has been pointed out in other uh, SAML implementations where comments are being parsed uh, incorrectly. And as a result, as uh, the message is being uh, normalized and comments are being removed, actually other parts of uh, the username in this uh, particular case or the name ID field are being removed and it's possible to impersonate a different user. The vulnerability was found by Secure Auth and uh, the blog post, which of course I'll link to in the show notes, uh, does include plenty of sort of indicators, uh, for example, how an attack would show up in your logs. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.